So this is the latest part in my water cooling guide, and this is probably the most interesting bit of the whole build. It's about getting the whole thing plumbed up. And you can do this one of two ways. You can do this with soft tubing, or you can do this with hard tubing. Let's start with soft tubing because that's the most straightforward. You're gonna need some barb fittings, and they are exactly what they say on the tin. They are barbs that go inside the soft tubing. And you want to make sure they're compression fitting so that they have a compression collar that slips over the tubing before you push the barb in. And then when you screw that down, it compresses the tubing down onto that barb. Very, very, very strong, very, very difficult to pull off. You can't really go wrong with these. Make sure that the fittings that you get match the tubing size that you have. That's always measured in inner and outer diameter. I personally choose to opt for a thicker walled tube. So something with a 16 mil outer diameter and a 10 mil inner diameter. Sorry to my American viewers. I am a Brit, we do everything in millimeters. That gives you a nice thick wall so that when you're bending the tubing, it makes sure that you don't have kinks in there. And you want to avoid kinks, guys. Kinky is no good, you want to, <laughs> because basically that's going to stop the water from flowing through the tubing. The order of the loop, it really does not matter, guys. Again, a bit like the airflow going through the radiator in the front of the case is a bit counterintuitive. You're naturally going to think that as the water runs through hot components, it's going to heat up. Then you need to cool it down. And... Whilst that might, again, technically be true, the reality is that the whole loop is gonna reach an equilibrium of temperature, so it's more about the total amount of cooling capacity that you have on the loop versus the amount of hot components, and we covered that off. Remember, it's one 120 mil space, fan space on a radiator for e each hot component that you're cooling, and two, if you're overclocking. So, so long as you follow that rule of thumb, the order of the loop does not matter at all. The order that I've got this loop running in is it's coming out of the pump, into the GPU block, then into the CPU block, into the radiator in the top of the case, and then the radiator in the front of the case, and then back to the pump. That completes your loop. Now, before you do any of that, make sure you set up some drainage. You are gonna to wanna to get the water out of this at some point in time, whether that to be to conduct some maintenance or to change the color or for whatever reason that you can't foresee, getting the water out is very, very troublesome if you haven't thought through how you're gonna do that. And trust me, there's plenty of people that have fallen into that trap. So typically I use a bull valve fitting. It's just got a twist valve on it and a ball that rotates inside the housing. Uh, so when it's perpendicular to the, uh, to the fitting itself, it's closed. And when it's parallel, it's opened. And then I use that in conjunction with the T fitting that just basically splits off. And you get yourself a nice, simple drainage system. Make sure you do this at the lowest part of the loop. Laws of physics, guys, gravity is going to need to do its thing. So when you open that drainage up, if it's at the top of the loop, you're going to have problems. You're going to be tipping your case upside down. You're going to be having a bad day and looking like a bit of a pillock, if I'm honest. So make sure that's right at the bottom of the loop. For me, that actually was on the pump itself because that's right in the bottom of the case. So literally, as the water comes out of the pump, the first thing it hits is our drainage system. That's all stopped off and capped off. So then it just flows through the rest of the loop. So if you're doing soft tubing, just get all your barb and your compression fittings, get that plumbed in. And then what you need to do is you need to fill the loop. Now hold that thought, I'm gonna cover off hard tubing first, and then we'll talk about filling the loop. In fact, we won't talk about that because that's in the next video. So you'll have to wait for that. Hard tubing, in my very humble opinion, guys, looks so much better than soft tubing. Those of us that have been water cooling for a while, lift lived with horrible soft tubing for years and years and years, it really is grotty, it leaches rubbish into your loop over a period of time, the tubing discolors, and looks quite like a hickledy-pickledy mess, if I'm honest with you. So acrylic, as it was originally, 
When that came out, I mean, that, that was just all of the rage within the water cooling community. Now, don't use acrylic. What you want to use is something called PETG. It's not as brittle as acrylic. It's much easier to bend, and it has a bit of flex in it. So if you have some slight deviations in your lineups, of course I never would, then, <laughs> then uh, there's a little bit of flex. A little bit of flex, though, guys, I stress. A little bit of flex. If you put these... Uh, components and these fittings under lots of stress you're either going to damage a o-ring and you're going to have a leak or worse yet you're actually going to damage the components of your computer they do require a little bit of force to get in i'm actually using uh, some fittings from monsoon that i actually did another video on which you can see uh, all about if you click on the link there they're absolutely fantastic because they have two O-rings inside the fittings. Now what's different between hard tubing and soft tubing is soft tubing, when that compression fitting is tied down, it, it literally is gripping that tubing down. You cannot pull that out. Hard tubing, it, whilst they're still called compression fittings, there isn't really any compression going on there. It's being held in by the O-ring alone. So you can, with enough force, actually pull that tubing out. God knows why you would be pulling that tubing that hard, but there we go, I've shared it for the record. You'll need to bend this tubing, so in order to do that you need a silicon insert that slides inside your tubing. Now if you have any problems sliding this in, gentlemen, then a little bit of lubrication is the best thing to use, uh, and by lubrication I mean a little bit of oil, cooking oil. Uh, Make sure that you rinse the tubing out after you've done that, but slide your insert into the tubing, and you'll want to use a heat gun. Now, you can pick up a heat gun for stripping paint from pretty much any reputable DIY store. Pretty inexpensive. I think I picked mine up for, I think it was about nine or 10 pounds, not a lot of money, so about 12 or 13 dollars. Uh, so apologies if I've got that exchange rate wrong. And what you need to do is use a relatively, relatively high setting, Switch your heat gun on, and then literally you just want to move the tubing backwards and forwards over the hot gun. You want to keep rotating it, moving it backwards and forwards. If you don't do that, you're going to end up with blistering and your tubing is going to look peculiar. As the tubing starts to get warm, you'll start to notice it's starting to bend and wobble a little bit. And you will be severely tempted at this point to start bending the tubing. Don't. It's too early. And we never want to do things prematurely. My God, the innuendos in this video are dreadful. So, as you start to feel the tubing bending, just move it away from the heat a little bit more. Keep rotating it. Try and keep the tubing as straight as you possibly can. And I would suggest that you do that for another minute, maybe 40 seconds, something like that. If you bend too soon, you'll end up with kinks in the tubing. Again, kinky is not good and you'll end up with flat spots on the outside of the bend. 40 seconds after you start to feel the wobble on the tubing, slow, slow, slow twist to bend the tubing. Do it gently and continue to do it over the heat. Once you've got the angle correct, move it away from the heat and then hold it steady. Now some people choose to dunk tubing into bowls of water and stuff like that at this point. I've never done that, never really seen the need to do it. Blowing on it is more than sufficient. Uh, it only takes something like a minute or two for that to cool down. Make sure that you hold the tubing steady. It will still be pliable for a period of time. But once it's cooled down, pull down your rubber insert, and then it's just a case of cutting the tubing down to size. Now, the key to a hard tubing run is to keep the bends as simple as possible and if you have kept that in mind and I have mentioned it several times in previous videos if you've kept that in mind as we've gone through actually this shouldn't be too much of an ordeal the reality is guys if you're doing hard tubing bends you're going to make some mistakes and you're going to end up binning some tubing it's all part of the learning process I've been doing this for years and I still end up getting runs wrong I had a particular problem in this build that the uh, the bend from the CPU block up to the radiator in the top was far too tight in as much that the two bends I needed to make were right next to each other. So as I started heating up the tubing to do the second bend, it actually caused the original bend to basically just 
droop droop out and it's never never good when it's droopy so uh, I actually had to put uh, an angular fitting on there and you'll you'll notice in this build and I have said all the way through this be careful about fittings because they cost a lot of money I have used a reasonable amount of fittings now I had an awful lot of those already when you've been water cooling for some time you just accumulate these things from previous builds it just made my life a whole heap easier and if you plan your loop and you actually get your tubing and you start measuring it out before you buy your fittings you'll save yourself an absolute arm and a leg if you don't you'll end up buying a whole heap of fittings because you won't want to be without you'll end up spending way more the fittings really are the thing that add a whole heap of expense into this if you're not worried about expense and you can't be bothered with all the fiasco of bending tubing you can then just do no bends at all and you just use fittings throughout the entirety of the build personally for me don't really see the fun in that but hey ho it's a free world and people have their choices so once you've got it all plumbed up it's ready to fill the loop but as i said that's another video for another time i hope you're really well wherever in the world you are please like and share this video subscribe if you're not to if you're not to subscribe if you're not and i'll see you in my next one.